Hello ladies and gents, this is Daniel again from Rock the JVM and in this video I'm going to talk about how Archetype incentivizes us programmers to write good quality code. So in this video I'm going to assume that you already know the basic premise of Arca, which is the actor model as being an alternative to writing distributed and fault tolerant code. I'm also going to do some slight comparisons with the old Arca API, so if you know the old Arca style with creating and changing actor behavior, that is a bonus, but that's not required. As always, I will recommend that you code alongside me, and whenever you need to refer back to these patterns or to the concept that I'm going to use in this video, just refer back to this video or to the other videos that I'm going to post on Arca typed. Good. Now, let me show you some code. So, Archetyped is widely praised for bringing compile time checks to actors and a whole new actor API. Now, the problem is that even this new API has certain loopholes that almost never completely close the old Arca anti patterns, which we have probably discussed in the community for quite a bit of time. However, the 2.6 API, which introduces the Archetyped as the de facto API in Arca actors, is a big step in the right direction because although this API is not really airtight, it's extremely powerful in the way that it shapes incentives for us programmers to write good quality code and avoid these anti-patterns altogether. Now, let me give some examples of some of the most basic things. So, first of all, let me start with the obvious. The messages that an actor can receive will be reflected in the type of the actor itself and vice versa. So the type of its actor ref will be both a reason for the compiler to yell at you if you don't send the right messages of the right type and also an indication to the user of the actor, that is your fellow programmers who are using your actors, about what those actors are supposed to do. So let me give an example. So let's assume that I'm creating an actor for some kind of an online store. And uh, this actor is responsible for managing the shopping cart. And I'm going to define a trait here that I'm going to name shopping cart message. And I'm going to uh, write some uh, implementations of this trait or some subtypes. I'm going to define a case class. Let's call this add item, which adds an item to a fictitious shopping cart. Item as a string, which extends shopping cart message. I'm going to add another case class. Let's call this remove item with an item as a string, which also extends shopping cart message. And I'm also going to create a case object, which I'm going to name validate cart, which extends shopping cart message. So I've defined a basic hierarchy of messages that my actor responsible for my fictitious shopping cart will be able to receive. Now, if I wanted to create this actor, I will need to spawn a behavior for it, because in the archetyped API, an actor is defined by its behavior. Now I'm going to start the actor right off the bat by creating an actor system. I'm going to uh, name this shopping root actor as an actor system. And I'm going to use actor system from Aka actor typed. So this type is available if you go to your build SBT and you add the com type safe Aka Aka actor typed library here. And I'm going to add the right dependencies for you in the description attached to this video. So you don't need to um, deal with all these libraries that I have here on screen. So uh, you can have access to this actor system from Aka actor typed by adding the line in the video description to your build.sbt. And uh, by building the actor system, you would create a behavior for the root guardian of the actor system, the top level actor in the whole actor system. And uh, this will have a behavior and uh, the behavior of this actor can be constructed by one of the behavior factory methods which, for example, will be like this. Behaviors from Aka actor typed Scala DSL dot receive message. And notice that the receive message takes an argument and that the argument is the message type that this actor will receive. And in my case, I'm going to pass in the top level trait, which is uh, shopping cart message. And uh, now we have a function that takes a message of type shopping cart message and returns a new behavior of this actor. So uh, I'm going to run some pattern matching here. So I'm going to say message match. And in case I have one of these three subtypes, I'm going to do something different. So in case I get an add item with some item, 
I'm going to say print line, I'm adding item to cart. And in case I got a remove item with an item, I'm going to print line, let's call this removing item from cart. So this is just an example of you doing different things depending on the message that you are going to receive. And a validate card, not card, but cart with proper spelling. Okay, and uh, I'm going to, let's say, print line. The cart is good. Okay. And uh, at the very end, this function will need to return a new behavior. And I'm going to return behaviors.same, meaning that the actor will not change a behavior as a reaction to a message. And uh, at the very end, I'm going to pass a name to this actor system. I'm, I'm going to call this simple shopping actor. Okay, so this is how we can spawn an actor by defining its behavior. And uh, the behavior is typed, meaning that the actor is also typed with this message. So if I try to say shopping root actor tell, and I'm passing a string, for example, hello actor, this code will not compile because the, the message that I attempt to send to this actor is not of the correct type. But I can send validate cart, for example, and this is good. So this is pretty damn awesome. You're now constrained in the type of a message that you can send to an actor. However, the problem with this new typed behavior is that the messages that you're actually going to react to are still pattern matched in your small hierarchy. And it's very unlikely that in your big ass application, an actor will process a, a single message of a single type ever, okay? However, the natural tendency is to think of an actor as receiving a message from a given hierarchy like we have here, which leads to the very nice object-oriented type structure of messages. So you don't have messages sitting around of all the different types and mixing behaviors in your system. So uh, this is pretty awesome in structuring your code. Of course, you can circumvent this rule and use any as the type of a message being passed. But uh, this kind of defeats the purpose, right? Why would you do that? Right from the moment when you start typing any, you kind of get this uh, small chill in the back of your neck that you're doing something wrong with your code. Whenever you use any as a definitive type in your variables or values, this is usually this is usually leading to a, a bad piece of code to an anti-pattern. So this incentivizes us to write good quality code by passing the right types for the messages that we want to send. And although we can cheat, cheating is harder this time and it makes us feel very guilty as programmers. So this is one example how Akka incentivizes us to write good quality code. And additionally, if your message hierarchy is sealed, for example, if you have a sealed trait here, then these types that you write over here are exhaustive, meaning that if you don't treat every single case here, here in your pattern match, the compiler will yell at you because you haven't exhausted your hierarchy. So pattern matching is not that bad if you have a sealed message hierarchy. So this is pretty awesome. Now, example number two with mutable state. So mutable state and mutable actors were discouraged in Akka from the very beginning. If you remember the old classic API, we had this small context become pattern to change actor behavior and hold immutable state in method arguments, which uh, are returning receive handlers. Now this might sound convoluted, but variables and mutable state have not disappeared. Let me show you. So I'm going to copy this actor and I'm going to make it mutable. And instead of using be behaviors that receive message, I'm going to start with behaviors dot setup. Setup is a preliminary behavior factory which takes a type argument t, which is the message that is going to be received. So we are going to do setup with shopping cart message as before. And this behavior setup takes a function from the actor context, which is something like this, ctx, which is an actor context of type shopping cart message. And this function should return a new behavior. And I'm going to put this behavior that I typed earlier inside this function. 
Now this pattern is uh, different than the, the previous one because in this function you are allowed to do some preliminary actions, for example uh, spawn children or start some values that you are going to use throughout the life cycle of this actor. And in particular you can spawn up a variable, for example the shopping cart actor can hold some variable, for example items, as a set of string, as a set. I'm going to start that with a set. I'm also going to name this shopping root actor mutable so that the compiler doesn't yell at me. Cool. So in this particular case, in the, at the moment this actor is being spawned, this variable will be created and the actor behavior, which is described by this piece of code, can be can mutate this variable. So for example, as a reaction to add item, remove item, and validate cart, I can actually mutate this items set. So for example, I can say items plus equals item. So I'm mutating a variable. And this is called local state, which is mutable. And uh, I can do this, the very same thing with remove item, items, minus equals item, and so on and so forth. And invalidate card, probably we don't do need to do anything at all. So the point is that in this particular case, we are still able to use mutable state in our actors. However, in most behavior factories, like behaviors.setup, behaviors.receive message, behaviors.receive, and so on and so forth, I think every single factory does that, but I'm not entirely sure, you're forced to return a new behavior after reacting to a message. In other words, the behavior changing is baked into the API now. And with this in mind, it's much easier to create different behaviors and have the actors adapt in a more logical way. And let me give you an example. So I'm going to call this mutable and I'm going to define some method that will simulate the exact same scenario that we have here as an item uh, set that is going to be mutated or changed in place after uh, receiving some messages, but without using a variable. So I'm going to define a method, let's call this shopping behavior. And uh, shopping behavior will take as argument uh, an items argument that is a set of string items as a set of string. And this will return a behavior of type shopping cart message. Behavior. And now I can actually add that. So I'm going to hit option enter or alt enter on Windows to automatically add that in IntelliJ. And I'm going to use behaviors dot receive message. And uh, this behaviors dot receive message will be typed with shopping cart message as always, as before, and I'm going to run the message match pattern match here. And for the message that I receive in this actor, I'm going to do a pattern match here. So message of type shopping cart message, and I'm going to do message.match. And notice that the compiler is now yelling at us because we are going to reassign some new value to this immutable argument. But we're going to fix that in a second. And at the very end, we are going to return a new behavior, which can be returned by calling this method again. So I'm going to call shopping behavior of a different set of string. But we can return that as a reaction to the message being matched. So instead of mutating a variable, we can say shopping behavior with items plus item. So this is returning a new behavior as a reaction to this item, to this message. Similarly, we can return a new behavior by calling shopping behavior with items minus item. And in case we get a validate cart, we can return behaviors that same because the argument is not being changed. And because we're doing a pattern match in a lambda, we can simply remove that altogether and just do a simple partial function. So I'm going to simply uh, delete that and I'm going to leave the cases as they are. So this is the description of the behavior of an actor, which after it receives 
for example, an add item message, it changes its behavior to a behavior returned by calling this method again with a different set of circumstances. And these circumstances are the method arguments instead of having them in variables or in mutable state. So this is much cleaner and much easier to reason about. So why would you need variables anymore when you have this logical code structure that avoids mutable state altogether? And this is directly baked into the API because the uh, function that takes a message and returns a behavior forces us to think in this way. So this is much easier to write good quality code directly baked into the API. So this was the reason number two. Now, let's talk about Okta hierarchy, because one of the massive benefits of Okta was the let it crash philosophy embedded into the whole Okta toolkit. So this was achieved by making the actors maintain the kind of supervision hierarchy in which if an actor fails, then its parent, which acts like a supervisor, can deal with a failure and decide whether to restart an actor or stop it or resume it or simply escalate to its parent. So this supervision was very powerful. And a common anti-pattern of the old Okta API was spawning very flat hierarchies. So people were doing system dot actor of. So this was the old pattern of spawning actors. And this resulted in very flat actor hierarchies, which destroyed this really, really great benefit of actor fault tolerance in Occam. So the crux of the problem was the fact that the system actor of method was easy. It was very, very easy to be called by programmers in general. In the new API, we don't have that. So no more system.actorof. You are now forced to think of the actor hierarchy and how the root guardian will manage them right off the bat. That's simply by the fact you can't spawn actors at all. You can only spawn child actors from a given actor. Let me give you an example. So I'm going to define a value. Let's call this root online store actor as an actor system. So this will be the root of the actor system that deals with the online store. And uh, this root actor will have a behavior so we have behaviors.setup and uh, this behaviors.setup will take an actor context and this actor context will be used to spawn children. So create children here underneath the root actor. So you can do ctx.spawn and you can use spawn for a shopping actor. So I'm going to use shopping behavior shopping behavior with the empty items set, assuming you're spawning an empty basket in your online store. So I'm going to pass a set. I'm going to name this shopping or Daniel's shopping cart. And the behavior of this root actor can be anything you want. You can make this actor receive messages itself, or you can leave its behavior to empty. So you can say behaviors.empty because you might want this root actor to not do anything. You might want its components or its children to react to different messages. And let's name this, let's call this online store. So you can only create children within an actor this time around. So no more system actor of left and right. You can only create children actors. You cannot create uh, actors from the system directly. So this actor API forces you to think of the actor hierarchy right off the bat when you start up your code. So this new API redefines what normal code should look like, and for the most part, it's shepherding Okta code towards the right direction. As I mentioned earlier, the API is not really airtight and can be circumvented, but expect to see better Okta code in the future simply by the tools we have now at our disposal. So I hope this video was useful and fun. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe for more videos like this to be coming soon. I'll also add links to everything that we discussed, including a link to a written form of this video for your convenience at rockthejvm.com. In the meantime, follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn for updates on upcoming material. And in the meantime, thank you for watching.